Hey, what's up guys? Sir Amanon here and welcome to another episode of Road to 1000 Dual Mimic Rating. And this is going to be day two of testing with Phantom Knights. So I want to thank you guys for leaving some comments and suggestions in the last video because obviously, as I mentioned, I'm not the most experienced with this deck as far as the minute intricacies are concerned. So I do appreciate the feedback in that regard and I'm learning along the way. But this is going to be the second day of testing, as I mentioned, up against uh, Dogmatica Shadals, and it's going to be kind of a trap variant similar to uh, Paxilist um, with the Dogmatic engine, of course. But we're going to go ahead and check out the modifications to the list. And you can see it's a, quite a drastic change. So I upped the card count to 50, as you can obviously see. And I bumped up the extenders, so I added in like Itelli, the Dangers, a third copy of Cloak. And I added in uh, more hand traps as well to kind of supplement this. So I added in the place of Ash and Meister, just to kind of dilute the brick count, if you will. Just trying to see if drawing these less is really worth it. Um, I really don't think that this deck really could sacrifice that much on consistency as long as you play enough extenders, and there's plenty of them to go around. Um, but just minimizing the chances of drawing these cards, even like the BAs that you don't want to draw, is uh, quite nice. So I figured that this is something that was worth testing. This is probably going to be a deck that I actually play a second week of on the Road to 1000 uh, rating series, just because I need to kind of uh, have a bigger sample size uh, before confidently making a profile on it, since there's just so much to kind of think about, and this deck is very hard to pilot correctly. But you can see the only change in the side deck was because I moved the ghost spells into the main, I just added in Droll for Drytron, but apart from that, not really anything too different here. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and check out the replay here. Like I mentioned, it is going to be a trap build of Dogmatic Shadals. So our opponent wins the RPS and is going to opt to go first. And our opening hand going second is going to be a copy of Wings, Silent Boots, Torn Scales, Call by the Grave, and Ghost Spell. So this hand is quite strong. We have a starter and we have uh, you know, a hand trap for going second. It's funny because the whole point of playing 50 is to reduce the chance of drawing those brick one ofs but we drew like the really good one ofs um, well, good in this case for Wing because we have the Torn Scale. And then Call By obviously is a very, very strong one of. But our opponent's going to start up with a copy of Nadir's Servant, and we are going to go ahead and uh, just go spell that. You can use this, of course, even though there are no targets in Grave to add back because of the fact that um, it checks in resolution, and there could theoretically be a, a Dogmatica target to add back by the time it resolves. Uh, so even though like my opponent could activate another one, you know, I just want to stop them from using it. Because if it's the first card they're activating, they're probably not going to be doing a whole ton of other plays. So my opponent's just going to set two back around a monster and then pass turn back. Uh, we draw a copy of Skullmeister, which is quite good actually, because again, it's going to be Shadals, right? So we go ahead and enter main phase one. There's only really one play we can make, so we go ahead and just normal summon the Torn Scale. My opponent allows the summon to go through, so we pitch the copy of Wings to the graveyard. And it's interesting because normally what you do here is you send Cloak so you can add Boots and then Special it to go into Cherubini. We already have the Boots, but I kind of want to send the Cloak anyways just because I figure it's one of the better ones to potentially go and grab a, like a, a Shade Brigadine for extension. I could have also sent Ragged Gloves too if I wanted to, which is useful in like protecting around Nibiru and stuff. So that's maybe an option to consider. But I went and uh, went ahead with the Cloak because I just thought it provided more immediate value in the event that my opponent ended up like trying to stop this play. But my opponent is, in this window, going to actually use Ice Dragon's Prison targeting the Cloak. And here's where it's really fortunate that we pitched the wings and we drew the wings to begin with because we can actually chain in response, because it's a trap effect, to the Ice Dragon's Prison to actually go and revive the Cloak that he targeted. So now not only is my opponent not going to get any value off of this, but I get my monsters back on the board, which is really, really good. Uh, this card is super strong against Phantom Knights, um, if timed well. So I'm glad that my opponent um, didn't actually manage to clear my field with this, because that would have been very, very detrimental, of course. From here, we're going to actually commit the Silent Boots, because I don't want to link away this cloak just yet, since it will be banished by the wings. So I want to have a PK name in Graveyard, so that that way I can utilize this Torrent skill effect to bring itself back earlier. Um, so that's the reasoning for that. Since I already had the boots, you know, might as well just use it as an extender, right? So we go ahead and make Cherubini here, and I am going to go out or to go ahead and send the Graph targeting itself, and then Graph will go and summon out Seer. So we have quite a lot of presence here. We have uh, a couple of PK names in the graveyard, and we can set up quite a lot of uh, avenues to actually try and OTK this turn, which is going to be my primary goal. Uh, my opponent's actually thinking before I use the Silent Boots, so thinking on resolution of the Seer Summon. 
So my opponent's actually going to flip up the copy of Sinister Shadow Games. Uh, so this is a really good card, obviously, because of the fact that Ariel is uh, super good against Drytron and Eldritch, and it unfortunately happens to be great against our deck as well, because uh, these are all really prime targets to be hit with Ariel. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, this is fine, because I have Skull Meister, so I can like negate the Ariel off the Meister, but my opponent actually uses the or uses the other effect of Sinister Shadow Games, which allows him to change his uh, face-down defense position should all monsters to face-up defense position. So he's actually able to chain block the Ariel. So he's going to do Ariel, Chain Link 1, and Hog, Chain Link 2, which forces me to use a Call by the Grave here. Obviously, I have to, but I was hoping to maybe save it for a potential hand trap. But as long as this Ariel doesn't resolve, I can't complain too much, right? We did draw the one of, so, you know, we got to take those. You know, if you draw the bricks, you also got to draw the Saki one of sometimes. So my opponent adds a copy of um, Shell Fusion Hand off the Hedgehog, and we are in a pretty good spot, provided that last card in hand isn't anything super impactful. But I make a bit of a weird play. Uh, I definitely ordered things a bit wrong here. So what I do is I go and use the Silent Brutes uh, to search for a Shade Brigandine. This probably should have just been a Fog Blade straight up, because I hadn't actually used the Ancient Cloak effect yet, since it was um, obviously brought back via the wings. So this could have actually just searched me the Shade Brigandine instead, since I already used uh, Silent Brutes, there's no point in using this to search Brutes. Um, and then, you know, because this can't search, or sorry, because a uh, cloak can't search fog blade, uh, I should have just done it the other way around. But from that, we're going to be able to use the torn skill to bring himself back. And here, uh, since both of these monsters are going to get banished, I'm actually going to overlay both of these instead of overlaying the seer for a copy of levier. And normally, like, you would try and detach seer off levier so you can bring back graph and then go into, like, rusty and stuff. But I figure that this is fine because actually bringing back the Cherubini is nice for facilitating Link 3 and Link 4 plays going second. So I thought this was fine, especially if, again, I'm trying to just OTK. So here we use Levier um, and bring back the Silent Brutes, and now we have the Cloak Primed in the Graveyard to be able to get value that way as well. But then here I do something really silly, <laughs> and it's uh, I make Rusty instead of just making Appaloosa. Because I'm going to make Appaloosa anyways, so I could have easily just done Cherry Beanie plus Seer plus Levier makes Appaloosa up here, and then Seer bring back the Cherry Beanie, and then Cherry Beanie plus Boots makes the uh, Rusty, but I do it backwards instead. Uh, this is definitely a lot riskier if my opponent actually ha or happened to have the Nibiru, um, but luckily my opponent actually didn't. I can just show the hand right now. It's a copy of uh, Shut All Beast. So yeah, uh, well, thankfully I didn't get punished there, but I definitely could have, so... That's kind of just a note to take away from this, is uh, order your plays uh, better than I did here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and obviously trigger the Seer to bring back the Cherry Beanie. And then the Rusty goes ahead and sets Fall Blade and sending, or sends the Ragged Gloves, because it's the last name. Uh, this is good because it turns into another extender since we didn't use the Graveyard Effect to Fall Blade yet. And here, like I mentioned, we make Appaloosa uh, too, a little bit too late, but I guess better late than never. Uh, and then we're going to set to the Shade Brigandine activate it, and then go for the Ragged Gloves to send a copy of Fall Blade, like I mentioned. Uh, bring back the boots. I misclicked the uh, zone, so I just fixed that real fast. Uh, you can check that log if you want to look at the timestamps. I did like two seconds after. But yeah, I need that zone vacant because uh, we're going to use the Shade Brigade to go into the copy of Link Spider, because Veritana Anaconda, of course, needs to affect monsters. So we're going to now use the Veritana Anaconda, send the materials, make Dragoon, and then that is going to be the end of the game there. Uh, this obviously can't use the graveyard effect um, since it already flipped up. And now we are going to move into game two. So that was a pretty good demonstration of how to play through the back row. Um, even though it was only two traps, uh, those are two very powerful ones against our deck specifically. Like Ice Dragon's Prison plus effectively just Aerial and threatening the Shadal Fusion. Uh, basically it made it so that I had to OTK because uh, resolving Shadal Fusion is really, really scary and I had no good way of stopping that. Um, so yeah, it was... A nice way to kind of just play through that. And opening the bell for the Nidir Servant also was quite helpful in that regard. But we're going to move into game two here. If you guys are enjoying this commentary, definitely be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new here and want to see content similar to this style. But our opponent is going to go first again in game two. And we're going to open up with a copy of Fogblade, Eteli, Torn Scale, Ash Blossom, and Kagemucha Knight. So this is a pretty strong hand again. Uh, we have Torn Skill tw uh, twice in a row, which is nice. And we have a bunch of extenders alongside one hand trap as well. This is not a deck that I need a ton of hand traps against, so it's nice to see like one and then like a bunch of other just engine cards, which is good. But our opponent's going to start off again with Endure Servant, but luckily we have the answer. 
And even though we're playing 50 cards, we actually have six answers because of the ghost bell, whereas my opponent only has three Nadir Servants. So we're actually quite likely to open, an, an, or open an answer to the Nadir Servant whenever my opponent draws it. But my opponent is going to, once again, set two back row and set a monster and pass. Uh, for turn, we're going to draw another copy of Ash, which will actually prove to be quite useful later. Here we're going to go ahead and summon a copy of Torn Scale, because again, only play we have access to. And then I'm going to summon the Kagamucha Knight, of course, from its own condition, or effect rather. Then we're actually going to use the Torn Scale, and I figured that, okay, well my opponent's back row here is likely, you know, the stuff that we saw last time being Ice Dragon's Prison and the Sinister Shadow games, so um, definitely want to get this Fog Blade into the graveyard so we can make a similar play to what we did game one. It's unlikely that he's going to use Ice Dragon's Prison here again at this window like he did the last time, but it's nice knowing that we have the insulation uh, just because now it acts as more of a deterrent than anything. So that's good. And from here, we're going to actually use the Cloak to try and grab access to Boots because once again, we want a PK name to profitably use the Torrent skill effect to er, revive itself. But unfortunately, my opponent actually has a Skullmeister, which is going to be quite... Uh, quite impactful on this particular board state because now we have to like manage our combo with fewer PK names. Like we can still combo of course, but it's gonna be a bit, uh, sorry, a bit more difficult to actually play through the back row. So we draw, or we go into a copy of Cherubini and here I'm thinking actually, I probably should have used the e Telly first because the Psychics are Earths, so they don't help make Rusty, whereas Kagamuja Knight is a Dark. So I was thinking maybe I should have done it that way but my opponent is actually going to, on summon, use the Dogmatica Punished. So it's actually going to be quite a nice sequence here. So what I'm going to do in response is actually chain the e -Telly. And so this chain is going to resolve. This is chain link 2, punishment is chain link 1. Now, the way it works is that all the cards remain on the field until the chain fully resolves, unless specified otherwise, like unless they're actually being destroyed. So because of this, punishment is now resolving, and e -Telly is going to still be on the field, while this punishment resolves. So it's going to send Apgalone and attempt to destroy Cherubini, but I can actually use Cherubini's protection effect, which allows you to send one other card you control to the graveyard instead to save it. And so I'm actually going to send the e Telly itself. So that's like a, a way that actually ended up working out for me, uh, not having used the e Telly prior because I wouldn't have access to that play. I would have had to have sent the, it would have been Kagemucha Knight and I would have had to have sent that instead. And that would have mattered greatly for the extra body. But my opponent is going to now trigger the Apgalone in a new chain, and here I have the Ash for that, so that's really good. And from here, all we have to do is play through one back row. So I am thinking that probably the worst case scenario is like a Sinister Shadow Games with a Shadal Monster set. So I'm going to try and force it a bit here. So I go ahead, use Cherubini, send Graf to summon Seer. And then we're going to, of course, uh, go and overlay, but here we're going to go for a copy of uh, the Break Sword. Reason being that I want to, again, force it so I can try and make more plays uh, a bit later down the line. So I'm thinking, like, as long as there's not really a way for my opponent to actually remove too many bodies from my field, we should be in a good spot to make Rusty regardless of what this is. My opponent's actually going to quit right away. I don't think my opponent should have scooped, but I kind of, like, go over what uh, is going to happen or what I think would have happened. So this is a set, or a set should all Falco. <laughs> And this is a Sinister Shadow Games, like I mentioned. So because Break Sword gets to be protected from Cherubini's effect, if it targets itself, uh, I was going to try and detach Seer, pop itself in the back row. This would be saved by Cherubini. My thought process would then be, okay, he chains the Shadow Games, sends Ariel, and then in a new chain, I would have attached Seer. So it would be Seer chain like once and then turn player targeting Graf, and his Ariel would then get to trigger, and his uh, Falco would also be able to trigger to bring back the Ariel. Uh, can't bring back the app clone, of course, because it's not properly summoned. Uh, but I think he would have targeted probably like Graf, the Torrent Scale, and the Fog Blade. In which case, I'd have to chain Fog Blade to bring back the Torrent Scale. So the board would be Cherubini, Torrent Scale, and Break Sword. Uh, but from here, I could just go into a Rusty, but it would have been hard to actually do anything after that because I just don't really have the PK names right now. This got Skullmeistered, so I can't use it again. And uh, I guess the only real option would have been maybe to send like a boots perhaps, um, but I would have just been running pretty low on like actual PK uh, cards. Now to be fair, I would have ended probably on double fog blade. I would have made an attack over my opponent's board. And 
Uh, the thing is that my opponent, even if my opponent top decked Shadow Fusion, he would be under punishment. So there's no way my opponent would actually be able to um, come back in a realistic fashion. So more than likely, my opponent would have drawn like a trap or a Shadal monster. Um, I guess worst case scenario would have been Nadir's Servant. Um, so I think, again, my opponent scooped a bit early there or just quit the game a bit early. I definitely could have come back because it would have been hard for me to actually OTK from this position because, again, I was just low on the Shadal or not Shadal names, the PK names here. But regardless, that is going to be another kind of demonstration of playing through the board going second here. So hopefully you guys did enjoy, and that's going to be for the video. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comments. Subscribe for more competitive and informative Yu-Gi-Oh! content. If you want to, you can follow me on all social media platforms or support me via Patreon TCG player. All the links in the description as usual. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys!